So we definitely have our fair share of electrical issues with the, um, the new R series. We got a T66 here and we got called out because we had no lift and tilt. The machine would drive, but it no lift and tilt. And there was just a little bit of a communication barrier. I asked if there was any codes and I didn't get really any good information about what codes were on the machine. So when I get out here, the machine did start up and, and what I found is that it would not release the lift and tilt because it thought the door was open. Okay, well, real easy. Maybe it's just a door sensor or something. Let's unplug the uh, wiring harness for the door from the machine, and that should kind of do away with anything that has to do with the door or the door sensor itself. But that didn't work. Even unplugged, I still got a code for the uh, door open. So it won't allow you to use lift and tilt because it doesn't want you to damage your door, right? So we had to lift up the cab. And right away is kind of one of our most common rubbed spots. I want to show you where we found that uh, problem and how we're going to fix it and what we're going to do to keep that from happening again in the future. And we've got the cab up. So what we're going to do is just kind of crawl in here. So bear with me. So one thing I always look for is this hose right here that's kind of coming up from the gear pump and going up and over to the back to the, to the fan cooler. This is going to be our charge hose. See right here where it's rubbed through? That's the metal braiding on the inside of the hydraulic hose. So we're gonna need to repair this hose, but to get them up and going today, what we're gonna do is just kind of reroute this hose. We're gonna loosen the fitting, and we're gonna spin it a little more, and we're gonna adjust where this is wire tied here with this rubber boot. This rubber boot just kind of keeps the noise down where that was vibrating on the metal tube. So we just need to adjust all that to keep the wiring harness from rubbing right there. So what we have here is our cab controller, and that's where the signal for that door sensor is coming from. And you can see I've already got my fuse box unplugged and the plug from the cab controller. I just got it unplugged so that now we can work on this and you can see better this rubbed spot. So right there is where it rubbed through, and it's a black wire. I know it's hard to see, but there is copper showing there. So it rubbed through the insulation of the wire and what happens is that grounded on that metal inside the hydraulic hose. So it was a ground fault issue. So what we're gonna to have to do is take a razor blade and cut out this insulation, uh, this wire cover, and go ahead and get in there and repair that wire. Now, of course, there is tools to do this, but I cut open a lot of harnesses. So if you're real careful, you can cut this insulation out without damaging or cutting into any of the other wires. We definitely want to avoid that. We just got to take our time, get through this real thick section, and we'll eventually get down to the wire that we need to repair. All right, so what we did is we just pulled off that insulation and, and we got down to our wire in question here. It's actually a brown wire, it just looked black. But, um, you know, I've inspected all the other wires around it. There is no other rub through wires. This is our only one. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and cut that in half and then take off as little bit of material. Sometimes what we have to do is it's rubbed through and broken so bad that we would have to add an extra piece of wire in here and make it longer. So we've done it um, many times with soldering uh, a new wire in there and taping it up. And a lot of people don't necessarily agree with that because they say that soldering um, is basically gives the wire a weak point because of the vibration. The wire can break um, over time vibrating. But, you know, if, it, if I was soldering in a connector down here or something like that, yeah, I would absolutely agree with that. But for many, many, many years that it's inside a harness right here and we tape it up solid with all these other wires, I can't ever see that actually vibrating and breaking if we were to use the solder method. But today we're not gonna use the solder method. We're actually gonna put a crimp in here because I have enough wire. See, we're, we're close enough. I don't know if you can see that because of the shadows, but we're close enough to where we can put a crimp in there uh, with heat shrink. Now we're gonna use a non-insulated tip and I'll show you our uh, non-insulated crimp. Let me go grab those and I'll show you what that is. So here's what we're gonna use. These are non-insulated crimps, okay? You can see there, there's no outer jacket, no heat shrink insulation on the outside of it, but we are gonna use some heat shrink over that. So we gotta put the heat shrink on the wire, crimp the wire, and then we'll just heat the heat shrink up and, and melt it over there. And, and the reason we like non-insulated as opposed to insulated, 
let's say we had two or three damaged wires in here and we started putting a bunch of insulated crimps in there, it's just gonna make this harness, it's gonna put a lot of thickness into it. And we can already see where we already got rub points. We wanna keep this harness as low profile as possible. Not only that, these crimps kind of save you from, even if you use an insulated crimp and you don't have the right crimper, you can actually damage the insulation on the crimp and then you're going to get water intrusion in it anyway. So these right here, you get a much better crimp. I think they're better looking. They work better, lower profile, just all around. Non-insulated crimps are what you want to use on a repair like this. slide our heat shrink insulation up over that. Try to get it out of the way because I had to bring my bigger torch. I can't find my little one at the moment, but if you're careful, you won't damage anything else. We just want to melt that heat shrink. Now we'll just kind of roll that right back in the harness. See, that just fits so nice inside there. They've already got a crimp here where they split off some of the power wires. So now to fix this harness, what we're gonna use is Tessa tape. This is harness tape. You don't wanna use electrical tape on these systems. I mean, electrical tape just doesn't last with the heat and um, the weather and all that. It just gets real sticky and it melts off. If you wanna do a proper repair on this equipment, throw away your electrical tape and get you some harness tape. I can't think of a situation where we need any electrical tape on these machines, period. If you do the, the, the repair properly, then those non-insulated crimps and all that, you, there, there's no need for electrical tape. So good harness tape, look in the description um, of this video and you'll see where to get uh, this harness tape. So we're just going to wrap this up real good and a little thicker probably than the insulation. I'll probably put two or three wraps on this. And this, this tape is also very abrasion resistant. It's heat resistant. So it can take some rubbing and some scratching and stuff. It's just, it's really good tape. It's almost like, um, like a sport tape that you put like on a hockey stick or something like that. It's, it's really tough stuff. So now this is a good proper repair. So what we can do is just go ahead and get this stuff hooked back up. Then we'll start the machine up and test it. After we move our hose around, of course. All right, now let's try it and see if it works. Okay, as you can see, we do have lift and tilt, but I do still have some codes here. Let's see what that's all about. It's a backup alarm. Okay, no worries. So we fixed the lift and tilt issue with just fixing the wiring harness, but there is still an active code that has to do with the backup alarm. So I'll get into that, but not on this video. The, the main purpose was to show how we go about fixing these harnesses and finding the problem. And, and usually a lot of these electrical problems is either moisture in the, um, the fittings or a, a rub through harness. But anyways, any questions on that, let us know. Thanks for watching.